It was an environment in which you couldn't really escape the lived reality of black people in the country and somehow take a position on it. I know there are many of my colleagues, particularly white South Africans, who uh, claim they were not able to see what was taking place around them and the systematic humiliation of black South Africans. But for me it was uh, pretty obvious and I think even at school I had a, already developed a very strong feelings about apartheid and uh, its justification or lack of justification. I was detained I think five times, in, mostly in solitary confinement, the longest period being about six months. Uh, house arrest for two years. So uh, that had the effect of drawing you into the culture uh, of resistance and the basis, uh, the basis for one's uh, stance, one's political stance. Um, and I think you have to be motivated by your own moral inclinations, not some sense of doing the right thing, because you go to jail and you've got to ask yourself why you're in jail and are you just living up to other people's expectations or other people's moral guidance, or is it something, some inner conviction which is driving you and on which you justify what your experience you're going through. But law is an interesting phenomenon. It uh, uh, allows you to engage with people as they go about the business, just not only of their own lives, but uh, protecting and establishing and strengthening the lives of um, the vast body of people living in townships and in trade unions, trying to secure organizational rights. And those are the rights which are important and which eventually affect the balance of power in South Africa and in South Africa uh, finally I think compel both parties, uh, both sides to recognise that they had to find a new way of living together. South Africa went through a kind of major earthquake in um, in its legal foundations during this time. So it was a position that was exciting. It was about establishing a new legal order based on human rights and based on, um, based on a new approach to political and civil liberties. He had a particular capacity, I think, to talk to multiple audiences simultaneously. In other words, he could talk to those who feared change and talk to those who were demanding change and sort of reassure both. One can't help but be struck by the enormity of the challenge the countries face to bring their people together. I spent some time in Afghanistan and of course worked in the UN, saw Many of my colleagues pay the ultimate price, um, which means that at the end of the day, when we look back at it all from this vantage point in history, it does beg the question, what was all that effort that the international community, what is it about uh, uh, that required uh, the international community to make such an effort? and? Why did it come to so little? It's very much about the concern for protection of civilians and the imminent danger that so many hundreds of thousands of South Sudanese are in, uh, particularly if the country were to erupt for the third time into a civil war in, in less than a a third civil war in less than a decade. One's task is to create a kind of common platform in which 
uh, in this case, all South Sudanese can come together and craft a way uh, and craft arrangements by which they can live together, notwithstanding the terrible fault lines which got exposed in those two civil wars. I think volunteering is a, a very important option in this case uh, through the UN volunteers, but it's an important approach in, in the bigger scheme of things. It's about engaging and joining the United Nations uh, in attempting to give expression to the values of the UN Charter uh, as a voluntary act, not as simple search for employment or the simple um, uh, way of filling up one's career, but to say, I want to make uh, my contribution to world peace. I don't think we could really do as if our job as effectively without them. I think the international consensus on living peacefully and harmoniously together no longer exists, not in the way that it, uh, it did 10 or 20 years ago. So the kind of leverage that the international community was able to generate in a variety of conflict settings has dissipated. It's made it more difficult for mediators, it's made it more difficult for the United Nations uh, to effectively secure the targets that we've set ourselves. So I think doing something for other people uh, is also doing something for yourself. The work that uh, uh, we do is truly rewarding. Mm -hmm.